Hello, hello, darling. Look at you having a squiz. Today we're going to speak about yield farming. Are you going to yield farm? Yes, no, maybe. What is it and what the hell's going on? Yield farming, to put it simply, is where I put a carrot on a stick in front of you and I bait you to not thinking about the long term. I try to give you an incentive to take money today, but it is at the cost of something. It's at the cost of your long-term gains in most circumstances. But with Pulse Chain, the treasury is pretty big and volumes will pick up. And you're going to see why later on. This actually means you could make a lot of money out of this. You have to be careful. Yield farming is the reason why most people don't make it. Yield farming distracts people from long-term thinking. It is there for the degenerates. It is there, there for the people with paper hands. They got hunchbacks. They're not even wearing anything remotely fluffy. They don't own anything fluffy. That's the type of people who do this. You might do it. You might try it. And that's fair enough. I'd like you to try it a bit. We're going to go through. So you're going to see now. Let's have a look at this. Hex is down like 70, 75% on Ethereum. So Hex on Ethereum. And this is the Hex on Ethereum. We don't have the bridge open yet. It's going to come out soon. But how is this going to reach a normal price? Well, you give an incentive for people to lock their liquidity, yield farming, and you give them another token. People love tokens. So on PulseX, here we go. I've got Microsoft Bing open for you. It's where Bing Max is here. On PulseX, you can go to the yield farm section. So not the trade. You go to earn and you look at the farms. Right now... There's only Pulse X to Pulse. This is going to expand. So with the PLSX token, it's a governance token, wink, wink. And then you get to vote. The community gets to vote on who should we hand out the rewards to. So what you would be doing is you're going to be seeing a lot of these communities try to come in like maybe Chaining Community, Shiba Inu, maybe the other Metaverse communities or the meme coins, they will try to come in and they will really want to join the program because they will bring users in. And with users comes the volume. And that's exactly what we want because of the buy and burn. So when you go to dexscreener.com forward slash pulse chain, you will see a list of all these coins. Okay, so you can liquidity bond for any of these and earn a part of the fees. But you don't get INC, the incentive token, for all of them. So you can actually go to PulseX. And what I do is I will just put in, if you go up here, type in one INC. Me and you, our brains aren't used to how much 374,000 PulseX is. Like, it's very hard for us to compute that off the fly. What I do is I change it to hex. So what I like to do is I look at, oh, one incentive token is about 1,000 hex right now. If you assume three cents, which is probably going to be higher than that, so it's about $31. Wow. So that's what's been handed out. And it's obviously handed out in a proportion of everything. So there is a dollar, fixed dollar amount you can hand these out, but you have to be intelligent with who you hand it out to and the incentives you want to provide. So you can come and liquidity farm. I have got some instructions for you and we're going to explore this. So the most important thing we want to see is EHEX and PHEX. <clears throat> It, this has gone over most people's heads. This is actually the key of everything. EHEX to PHEX ratio, baby dolls, is going to be the shining light. It will be the example. Why? EHEX to PHEX ratio, so the hex on Ethereum and the hex on Pulse Chain. Right now, the hex on Ethereum is 3.1 cents. If we can get them to match and stay around the same price and go up together, this will slowly but surely send a signal to the rest of the crypto industry that maybe their coins can do this too. And you might say to me, oh, I don't think the developers of my coin are going to approve of this. And I'll say to you, stick it up your bum. We don't care about the developers. It's all about the network effect of the community. I don't care if four nerds with the checkered shirt who don't even shave, I don't either, by the way, that's a joke. They don't shave, they have a P 
pen in their front pocket, I don't care if they say they're not going to support Pulse Chain. If they have 300,000 members, I'm telling you right now, at least 10,000 are going to be yelling at, yelling at them. At least. High-pitched voice yelling. They're going to say, excuse me, we have money over here. If you don't, if you don't support this, I'm dumping your useless poopy token and I'm rotating into something else. Because I'll tell you what, look how fired up I am in my little dusty room right now. And yes, I got the heater on and I'm wearing my fluffy slippers, of course. You can hear them tapping away right now. I tell you right now, this voice that I've just shown you is one of the most powerful things you've got to imagine in your head. This is what will be the link. Because if people are yelling at their community founders to go and support Pulse Chain and they are threatening they will leave if they don't support the free money, they will go to a community that does. This is now starting to open up so many passages in my mind. We've, we've, we're have we doing something that no one's ever done before or seen before, and this is what we want. There's so many unknowns here. But first, you got to get this E-hex to P-hex ratio. So how do we do it? Well, you take this little token. It's all about the E-hex to P-hex. So the hex yield farming pair, E-hex and P-hex, the Pulse Chain Bridge is going to open. They'll give you INC. You will liquidity bond E-Hex and P-Hex. So you're going to have to figure it out, baby dolls. I don't do these super basic level one uh, instruction videos for everyone, but you're going to have to go here. You have to liquidity bond. You go to liquidity section, and then you'll be able to add the liquidity, and you'll go, yay, I want to add like, you know, uh, 10 million PLS, and it'll do the, it fixes it in the ratio, and then you lock yourself in. This is why you're listening to me right now. I'm going to show you this right now. If you go to dexscreener.com forward slash pulse chain, you have to go to the ratio. You see this first thing? You sort by transactions. See this? Go to the ratio. This is a poopy. This is not the real one. This is why it's very annoying to actually see this. You're going to have to get the proper one. Okay, this is crazy. I right clicked on it to open a new tab. And it gave me the false one. This is a very annoying bug. It, they keep going to they keep going to PLP, which is very annoying. PLP is the actual liquidity thing that you get as well. You, sh you don't want to look at this. You don't want to see this big fat red candle. That's the wrong one. So I left clicked on it. Don't right click and open a new tab. It's buggy. I hope they fix it soon. So this is what you're actually locking in. So if we did it in right right now, so I'm going to show you right now. This is what you're doing. You are long from here. I'm going to get a horizontal line. Here we go, a horizontal line. You're long from here. So if you add liquidity right now, you are going to be long exactly at this price. And there is an impermanent loss calculator. So you can go quickly to CoinGecko, and I'm going to get it for you right now. You go to CoinGecko. You can actually look up the impermanent loss calculator. Okay, baby, I went to CoinGecko, and I just typed in impermanent loss. I went to Google, typed in impermanent loss calculator, and I've got this page here. I'll put it in the description for you as well. So you're going to have a look at this. you got to know this. If you don't know this, you're going to lose a lot of money like everyone else, and I do mean a lot. And trust me, it won't be in pulse X to pulse. It's going to be in the other ratios because you're going to see higher yield. So you have, see this asset price, one price change? The weight is 50-50. So you're going to leave these because you are in 50-50, exactly the same ratio, exactly the same weight in each one, 50-50. What you can do is you can see what happens to how, how your loss scenario if they deviate too much. So what you could actually do is you can go back to the page and we can see, okay, remember this is the ratio moving. So it's possible, okay, it's possible the, the ratio moves too far up or too far down over time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know, okay, if it moves too far up, just to let you know, I'm going to be completely honest, even though I don't like yield farming, etc. If this moves too far up, most likely it's because the market went risk on. So PulseX is screaming and probably Hex is screaming, Pulse Chain screaming, Bitcoin and Ethereum are screaming and everything's great. So you're not even going to really feel your loss. So even though you have like maybe 12% less than what you have, you don't. You never even knew that. You don't even know what's going on. You know what I mean? You're just happy la la in the, in the sky. The pain is this down scenario. This is the pain part, okay? This scenario is the pain part because this is where you actually got to really learn the hard way about impermanent loss. So yeah, it could drop another 50% from here. So what, you, what, what would happen, right? This is where it gets disgusting. You can actually see your Pulsex, right? Let's say your Pulsex dropped 
minus 50%, right? But Pulse, PLS, stayed the same. So this would be the ratio dropping like this. See how it did minus 50% here? That's possible. So literally, PLS stays the same, which is 3x from day one sacrifice. And then Pulse X drops another 50%. Now everyone's minus 50% from day one sacrifice. Okay. That's, that is a very possible scenario, just like everything else. And what would happen is you get to see, see this little number here? 5.719%. So what it means is it means if you were to sell at that point, once again, let me repeat this to you again. Let's go in, let's zoom in. Let's remove this super fancy up arrow, all right? I've still got here. Okay, so if you were to sell down here when this happens, you will, so let's go to this, the add liquidity part, right? You see add liquidity here? You're going to know your total dollar number and how much quantity you have because it's a 5.8% loss. If you were to actually remove this and then sell your tokens and look at everything, you're like, wait a minute. I have 5% less of my coins here. So you might say, see how there's like 10 million PLS up here? What you would actually have is you would have 0 0.95 times 10 million. So you would have 9.5 million down there. That's exactly what would shock you. You're like, what the hell? I put in 10 million. How come it's down like this? And there's the price loss as well of the Pulsex. So that'll hurt. But let, we're just looking at the quantity. So this is what they say by impermanent loss. But now, I'm going to just be honest with you. If it comes back, you lose nothing. You lose nothing. And this whole way, you have earned yield. This whole way, you've earned the yield, earned the yield, earned the yield, and earned the fees. So this is what everybody hopes. They hope that they're buying it in the middle of a range or in the middle of a bear market, really, because they hope that they don't have to really sit through too much pain of doing this. That is the, the main goal. And you'll be paid for this. Now, you've got to work out how much yield you're going to get in that time. So I've already told you, and by the way, you can't game these, trust me. Every time you try to game these, there are professional yield farmers, okay? What I mean by try game it, don't think there's a free lunch anyway. There never is. There are people, they can't diamond hands with me. They are made of paper hands. They got hunchbacks, okay? They can't think of the vision. They don't have the vision. They don't have the balls or the ovaries. They focus on this little yield farming trash game. So what they will do is, and you're going to notice this, right? So if the pulse X to pulse yield, if the yield rate, which you can't see right now because there's actually no USD value, see this APR? If it's, I promise you, if it's anything above 20%, people will put in millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars into this. I'm not joking. They will crush it, <laughs> crush that yield down. And they won't crush the price they'll crush the yield down, which means they all come and join in. The vultures come in. So you're not getting hurt, but you're just watching your little incentive token. Maybe you, you're watching it. Like You're going to remember this. You're going to go, wow, I was earning one incentive, one incentive token a day. You were saying that. In two weeks, it's going to be like 0.6. Maybe not that aggressive. Maybe like 0.8, right? So you went from 870 hex. Now you're down to 678. And then in like two months, it's going to be like 0 0.4, like that. So you're down to 300 hex a day. And then in like, you know, another two months after that is like 0 0.2. So for you, you're like, man, it's not really worth it that much anymore. Kind of went away. This is the story with every single yield farm. Starts off high, gets everyone in, and then you get to see all the vultures come out. Because these people, they have no balls. They don't know how to buy and hold long term. So what they're doing is they're coming in. They have a ratio. So what these people, that's what they do, right? They come in, they have a, they have a, they'll draw a box and they go, okay, I only want a liquidity provide in this box, in this middle box. And if it goes outside of the box, I exit. So there are people, now me and you, right? We, we understand the, the Pulse Chain ecosystem and we understand the buy and burn. But I promise you, if Pulse X to Pulse goes down here, there will be people panic exiting out. They'll exit out here and they'll say, oh, it's down below 0.2A ratio. I want to buy down at 0.10. They, they will say that. And the same thing on the upside. They'll say, oh, oh, something's happening. I'm just out. So these people, they try to mix and match in the range, etc. So most of the time, you're going to be fine if you just chill out. Just literally do nothing. So you can experiment with these, but it's all about the yield. So if I want you to do anything, if I want you to jump off a bridge, to shake my hand, or to just turn around and go the other way, I'm going to give you a carrot. But now you're going to ask me, okay, how big is the carrot? Is it a tiny little baby carrot? Or is it big 
fat giant elephant carrot? That's the exact question you've got to be asking with this yield because now we don't know the yield. It's like, okay, how much is it worth it to do the APR on this? How, how much how much APR is worth for you to take this risk that you get that you get trapped in? So that's something you only you can answer. No one else can answer this. But if you want to know the kind of the secret, look, the, the secret is with Pulse X to Pulse, there's nothing you got to worry about, friends. Right? Nothing you got to worry about. Remember, all of this is going to come down to E hex and P hex. So with the E hex to P hex, completely unknown. I can I can't not even bother speculating. The number could be very high at the start and then go down. It can drop. So the short term staking yield is about eight to nine percent for hex. Hex on Ethereum and hex on Pulse is about eight to nine eight to nine percent. So. If you really wanted to incentivize this liquidity bond, you would give it more than eight to nine percent for the short-term people. But now you got to figure out the sweet spot. You think, okay, how many of the incentive rewards? Because there's a limited supply. How many of them do you want to give to these people? So this is where me and you, you have to decide this for yourself. How much do you think it's worth? And you got to understand the risk as well. So I have here. So let's say at the start. I'm going to draw a box. I'm going to construct for you the ratio. So E hex to P hex doesn't exist right now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw. You're going to write, I'm going to write one. So maybe let's do, this is E hex to P hex. So this is E hex over P hex. Okay. So this is really the E hex direction. Okay. So up going is E hex strength. So Ethereum hex strength. So what you're going to be looking at is, we're just going to get this cute little logo so you don't forget. Okay. So we're going to look at this. Maybe it starts 1.0 here, like the absolute, maybe that's what it starts at. So you're going to have to see at what point do you think it's worth it to provide this? Just because how is the next year going to transpire? Are there people who are going to end their big hex on Ethereum stake and dump hex on Ethereum? Or are they going to be benevolent? Do you think the weak hands are out? Only you can answer that. We don't know. So the ratio, just going to guess. Anywhere, it could, I'm not joking, it could go from anywhere from 0.10 to here's one, or it could even go, I mean, I know that, I know what I'm about to do might shock you, but no one expects this, except maybe me. I know this, just get ready, get ready, right? Yes, that's right. It's possible. It's possible that one day in the future, <laughs> Hex on Ethereum is higher <laughs> than Hex on Pulse Chain. Don't ask me how. I'm just telling you, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my life. And hey, no one even had, this has never crossed anybody's mind that this is even remotely possible. So it's fantastic to even think about and ponder with you. Maybe one day we get to rewatch this video and go, oh, there was somebody out there who thought about Hex on Ethereum going more than Hex. P Hex, wouldn't that be, a, wouldn't that be the trade of a lifetime that actually happens? Talk about going against the grain. So you want to go against the grain with me? <laughs> That's going against the grain. By the way, don't go all in on one. You can just be a bit overweight in one. Okay. So this ratio can go up or down. You will have to lock in and receive yields. So what Richard obviously wants is that everyone stays in around here. If we can lock it in one to one, when all the money comes into Pulse, PLS, and it drags up the whole market, EHEX and PHEX are bonded together. But you need that carrot. So I'm going to draw, we'll get this little carrot emoji. How big is your carrot? You have, you, only you can decide at what point do you want to take this risk? Because it is a risk, I'm telling you now. Because look, there's going to be people with big stakes coming out, people with big accounts. And here's another thing you have to think about. There will be other coins launching. There will be other, other networks forming out there that will make Pulse Chain look a bit old. And this will happen in six months, 12 months, 18 months. And what I mean by that is there might be meme coins and degeneracy and all this other stuff, okay? So just think in your mind, people who have both Hex on Ethereum and Hex on Pulse Chain, which one do you think they're going to sell first? And that's something you got to think about, okay? This is this is also part of compu computing all of this in your head. You go, well, you know, if there was another meme coin season and some other meme coin went to the moon, that would you'd think, oh, they'd probably sell their hex on Ethereum first. Maybe. What if the gas fee is high? Maybe they do hex on Pulse Chain and they send it to another exchange. So th this is only you can compute this. We don't know. Maybe the biggest players sell hex on Ethereum first. Maybe that's their first go to. 
or maybe people are doing 50-50. I know if I'm doing a short, selling my short-term yield, I'll be selling 50-50 because I don't want to really take a punt like this. But see, do you see all these in unknown certainties? That's why the carrot has to be pretty big for you to completely forget about it. So the yield, the yield starts off high, baby doll. It starts off high and it goes down over time. See, Rich is very smart. He, he understands this. See, a lot of these other yield farming programs like that they did in 2021, they got no idea what they're doing. What they did was they had like $600 million stimulus and they said, that's it for three months. Here we go. We're handing everything out. Bad strategy. Bad strategy. Instead, what they would have should have done is they cap the yield somewhere, they keep everyone in, and then they slowly drop it down over time. They basically extend everyone. They buy everybody's attention for instead of three months, you literally bust and you're done. Instead of that, they will slowly drip it out to them. This is actually how the hex inflation function works. Richard Hart got it from Bitcoin because Bitcoin's works like this. You know how the you know how Bitcoin has a halvening every four years. Well, Hex's halvening is basically every day with the T share rate going up, and it's basically doing the halvening every two and a half years, but it's incrementally doing it every day. So perhaps with this incentive token, this is what you're going to see. So yes, these yields might be lucrative on day one for you to participate, and you have this risk and everything going on. But now you have to think about: Is it going to be worthwhile in six months? And I'll tell you right now. Every single yield farm ends the same. It ends with the yields going pretty poop and not everyone is as happy as they thought that, I promise you, every single time. Because when it comes to these, okay, so yes, you might want to check out these yield farms, EHEX, PHEX. It's going to be great for the first, I don't know, six weeks. It, it'll be super great for the first two weeks and then the next two weeks a bit, low, a bit less and then the next two weeks, a bit less, a bit less. And liquidity, you get to see how many people are there who are sticky, how many people who aren't there. A lot of these factors, eventually, the chickens come home to roost, basically. So when you look at this, you have to think about how much yield are you going to be getting and how much is it really worth it to take any of this impermanent loss risk? Because in these other coins, you can get absolutely decimated. Because <laughs> I'd use this cute example for you, right? You're like, oh, 5%, it's not that bad. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what about in your other poopy coins? One of, one of them drops 85%, 80%. Now you've lost 25% of that asset you wanted. For example, if you are doing a yield farm for a poop coin and PLS, and the poop coin dumps minus 80%, you've lost 25% of your PLS in that farm. 25% gone. So you, I don't even know how much yield you can make if any of these disgusting things happen. It might take a while, right? This is over the year. You have to you have to really rotate your yield, and this is something you have to think about. Where do you rotate the yield, etc.? Just as a basic prim premise for me, I think it's nice just to keep. I would ro keep rotating yield just to hex. Just keep buying hex on Pulse Chain. That's super simple. You can stake it. You can earn yield because the Pulse Chain doesn't have the validator yet. You can't you can't rotate into RPLS. Pulse X is obviously probably the thing to get, but. I know how we are, man. You want a number to go up, okay? You can get your hex to go up and then you can stake it. And they're like, you know, I, I love the, re I know the retail and everything. Oh, you make money on money. Woo, passive income. Well, that's what you could do with hex. It's a it's a beautiful system that's actually created here. It's, <laughs> you're going to be surprised how nuts people actually go for this. So yield farming, you're going to wait until the bridge is open. You're going to see all of these yield farms. Things going to start to pop up. Now, at the end of the day, your final strategy, how much do you think it's going to be worth? Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to be juicy and it's going to help boost the prices of Hex on Ethereum, Hex on Pulse Chain. It will do that. But at the end of the day, okay, so this is a funny, funny meme I have. Okay, when the Pulse Chain bridge opens, everyone will be bridging in their Ethereum mainnet tokens, everyone. And when everyone comes in, they're coming for that yield. So you're on a timer. Everybody is coming for it. The yield will start high. It will start dropping. And you're going to get to see over time, you're like, oh, you know, it's going to be a bit underwhelming at the end of it. But it'll be exciting at the start. So once we get these USD values established, Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, big yield farming season. Okay. But now you know. Now you know the risks. You are playing a ratio no matter where you enter. All right. No matter where you enter, you are playing a ratio. And here I am in this cute little doggy just going to his cute little bed. This is most likely, this is, this is the optimal outcome, all right? 
Everybody, who, if you look at the wallets who made the most, it had nothing to do with yield farming. Nothing. It was the buy and hold, do nothing. So when you're playing these, you introduce a lot more risk. So you're going to see a lot of these coins and a lot of these ratios. But at the end of the day, you know exactly what you have to do. Because when it comes to these, you're looking at all these coins, right? You're looking at impermanent loss. You're looking at all this stuff, all these throwing in. Now I've introduced these ratios to you. It depends how much you sitting here, you got to think to yourself, are you prepared to deal with this? And let's say you say to me, yes. You say, yes, I am prepared for this. I like the yield. What is a very basic cookie cutter strategy you can give me? I'm going to give it to you right now. So I want you to start with, if you're going to participate, start with 10%. Start with 10% of your bag size. So you might do 10% of PLS, 10% of PLSX. This is like the most basic. This, this ratio ain't going anywhere. And if it does drop down, it'll be fine because I'll be buying with everybody else down here. You know, everyone's ready to buy down here, buy and burn, play for the bull market, right? You can't say this with many other things. E-hex to P-hex, a lot of it's un uncertainties. Uh, that will probably survive as well, but anything else, now you're going into the unknown. So a cookie cutter strategy, I would start with 10% size, and then I will just do a basic rotate all ints, so incentive token into P-hex, and that's it. So I'm going to put this little carrot here for you. That's what I would be doing. You say INC is what you earn, all right? INC, so remember one INC here gives you 850x hex. That's what I would personally be doing just every day. I wouldn't be saving INC. Other people are, and yes, it's advantageous for the people in the yield farms to do it, but I don't know if I want to take that risk, to be honest. It's completely up to you. I'm just letting you, me, in these yield farms, in my lifetime, I have tried the diamond hands, the holding, all this. It doesn't work out, man. Now, I know an incentive token is going to be a bit different. And the juicy part is, so if you want to hold it, you are free to do so. There is a big benefit because the big benefit is this, which might shock everyone. There is a, if you go to Dex Screener, there is a incentive token with PulseX, right? Look at this. You see number six here? Incentive token with PulseX. And if you go to one of my quick posts, you'll see in the past two days, I'm going to find it for you here. In the past two days, the PulseX protocol has pumped 660,000 US dollars into PLSX coins so far. It assumes PulseX sacrifice price. Okay, so here I am explaining. It basically, it took $660,000, pumped our bags, and then it burned all the coins. And look what it's liquidity bonded to. You just saw it is liquidity bonded to the incentive token. So this is by design. Ricardo himself wants this. So the volume fees going from, so we have here, okay? So you have your PulseX. Let's get this here. We have the cute little, here we go, the cute little PulseX, all right? PulseX is earning fees, okay? So when people trade, so these people are trading, there are fees that are go. It goes and it buys, PulseX, the token itself, okay, this is going to be a big token. It buys the token itself and it takes it off the market, okay? Now, when you have the incentive token, which I'm just going to do like a little magic wand here, right, little wand, magic, here we go. When you have the incentive token and it's bonded with it, okay, this valuation of them together as as PulseX goes up, it's dragging it with it. So this is what's going to happen. It's going up and to the right. It's, it's dragging the incentive token to the right. So this is hopefully going to create a underlying bid for INC over time. We don't know how much it can actually sustain because you need the volumes. It's not like this is just magic. Like you need high volumes. You need it to keep going. And there's a $670 million treasury to back all this. Okay. So don't forget my cookie cutter basic strategy. If you want to participate, you start with 10%. I don't want to hear of anybody getting absolutely decimated. Don't ever do 100%. Why? Because, let me tell you this. Look at this ratio. This is pulse X to pulse. Okay. If it goes down to 0 0.20, that's still not cheap enough. Okay. You don't want to be 100%. I want to buy if, I hope this doesn't happen, but if, if pulse X to pulse goes down to 0 0.10, this means 10 pulse X is worth one PLS. That's how valueless, valueless 
pulse axis if it goes down here because you didn't lock up everything up here because you you still have like 50 60 70 80 90 percent of your bag down here you can use your pls spend it and buy pls sex down here so that's what you would be doing if it got down here in the event of an emergency let's say black swan bitcoin ethereum volume dies comet hits earth down here pulse x is very 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 cheap you will want to spend your pls but you're only going to have your pls if you didn't lock it all for liquidity down here you have nothing down here you just be relying on that yield farm, but the price of your assets gone down anyway, so it's not going to make up for it. Because think about this, man. If you were to convert at 0 0.10 your your pulse into pulse X, up back up to 0 0.40 later on, you're going to get a 4x. So I did this example before, right? You can take 25% of your pulse bag, buy pulse X down here, and you can get 100% back. So you can get literally double your stack, but you need it to go down here first. So you need to be prepared for this scenario. So that's why all these yield farmers, they're not prepared for any scenario. They just have this range and they exit here and there, okay? So maybe does. I've gone through everything for you. You now understand the yield farms, the incentives, the e-token, the peak token, all of this, the cookie cutter strategy right here. Please read this again. Rotate all incentive token into PHEX. You can't go wrong with this because at least if it screws up, you can still stake the PHEX and just assume it's one dollar, one dollar fifty, two bucks one day. So you've gone a long, you've gone a long way with this. All right, baby dolls. So like, subscribe, bell button, all. Tell mom and dad you love them. I'll catch you in the next one.